Hi, in this video I will show, show you how to use epsilon definition to show a limit. So first of all, the limit is that uh, the definition limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to L, if and only if, for all epsilons greater than zero. So they will give us an epsilon, and it's saying that for each epsilon there should be at least one n, capital N, which is a positive integer, such that for all n's, for all n's greater or equal than capital N, we should have a n minus L is less than epsilon. What this means is that, uh, imagine I have my sequence, okay? Let's say this is the point L, and I have my neighborhood of L, epsilon neighborhood of L, L minus L, L plus L, 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 L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon, and I have my terms. Let's say a0 is here, okay? a0, a1, whatever, a5. A I have all of my terms, okay? Here, 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 here. And this is saying that there should be finitely many terms outside of this neighborhood, okay? These are the outside part, and this is the inside part. It is saying me that there should be finitely many terms outside of the neighborhood, and infinitely many terms at the outside of uh, at the inside of the neighborhood so this is what it's saying me that for each n's greater or equal than capital n because this is a number okay for example this is 50 this is saying that for each n's greater or equal than 50 it should be inside okay uh, this is what it means so let's see how we can use it so this is my a n okay this is a n and this is my l so let's use this definition. So I am uh, I already have a given epsilon, okay? Epsilon is greater than zero is given, okay? We can just say let epsilon greater or equal than zero. It's it's same. And now I should write a n minus l, which is n times sine of n over n squared plus one and minus zero because l is zero. So I know that everything here is positive, so I'm just saying this is equal to n sine of n over n squared plus 1. So in the end, I want to make some inequalities. It should always be less than because in the end, I want to do something and find that this is less than epsilon, okay? So I should say this is smaller than something, something, something. And I'm actually trying to find still something small. I'm making it bigger by saying it's small, but it should still be small. Like I want to have something like one over n plus one. It should be one over like two n, n squared. It should be kind of in this form so that when the n is big, this thing is going to be small, okay? So now I know two inequalities, the most commonly used two inequalities are, uh, let's write it here. I know that sine of n is less or equal than n. This is for all n's. And also, I know that sine of n is less or equal than 1. This is also for all n's, okay? Uh, these are the most commonly used uh, properties, inequalities for a sine function. Well, as I said, I want to make this part small. So if I take this is less or equal than n, it's not going to be useful for this case. And so I will say this is less or equal than 1. So I have n times 1 over n squared plus 1. So if I take... Uh, so now I can use another small sign, okay? And I can keep this one same, okay? So I know that n squared plus 1 is greater than n squared. So if I say this, reciprocal of this thing it will be less than this thing okay and now i can say this is equal to one over n and now uh, this is kind of the best scenario i can get at the, it could be like uh, something a bit more differ different but this is kind of the best case i will do another video that this part will be a bit more complicated and so i know that n small n is greater or equal than this capital N. So I can say that this thing is less or equal than 
1 over capital N. If I take reciprocals of both sides, 1 over N is less or equal than 1 over N. And now, so I came to a part that I have something of function of this capital N, and my goal was to find that a n minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, this is my goal. So now if I say this is less than epsilon, I'm almost done. So let's finish it. So I know that 1 over n is less than epsilon. If I multiply both sides by n over epsilon, I will get 1 over epsilon is less than n. So let me write it in the other way because... 1 over epsilon. So I know that n is greater than 1 over epsilon. So for example, if I take n to be equal to 1 over epsilon, I will be done. But uh, there is a bit more uh, details here because I know that n should be a positive integer, okay? 1 over epsilon may not be an integer. So there are different ways to do this part. Here, how, how I would do, so I can take a uh, floor function of this. Floor function is the function that uh, rounds our number to like smallest, to the number that is smaller than our number, but biggest such number, like 2.3 of floor function of 2.3 would be equal to two, okay? So, but I want this to be greater than this thing, so I can just add one to it, okay? And this is how can I choose the end, and this is actually the end of it. So let's see what we have done till here. So I picked an epsilon, okay, arbitrary epsilon, and I found the function of epsilon that gives me the end, okay? And now let's look at the definition. It's saying for each epsilon, which I took an epsilon, and it is saying me that there should be at least one end, and I showed that that end is exist and I gave it in the way that how can I find this n for every epsilon, okay? And this condition satisfies because I this is how I found the n actually. So this condition satisfies and therefore I show that this limit is equal to L here which is 0.1.